I mean, here in the States, I don't know if this is a, a phrase where you are, but work is a four letter word, right? We figure that stress is part of it. We think that it's just, you know, we can't expect more than to have to carry that at work. And what I see and what I don't, a connection that I think a lot of people miss out on is that when we are stressed at work, which is often a big cause of it, I mean, life serves up situations. And so stress can happen in our personal lives and emotionally too, of course. But that consistent impact of stress, we can express that fully at work, right? We've got that professional persona. Where we start to give a little bit, where it starts to show up is in those personal relationships with the people that we love the most, because that's where we feel safe and can express ourselves. So one kind of indicator is if you're struggling in your personal relationships, if you are um, more emotional or irritable, you're not communicating as well, you don't feel heard, you're not hearing what other people are saying, that could be indicating that that stress is showing up here where you have space for it. And it's you know coming from other sources. So the impact in relationships is one. Um, sleep is the most common complaint that I hear from people, you know, that busy mind, which is kind of that there are so many cases in which stress exacerbates a physical situation, which triggers our stress. But when our mind is so busy and it interrupts our sleep, we can't file the thoughts and have that fresh slate for the next day. So that tends to start escalating things. So there's a lot of, of ways in which I, I try to help people find a, a way to pause the cycle and take a break. Um, recognizing where we are with our breath is so important. A really, really powerful intervention for when the anxiety is ratcheting up, but just in normal cases of stress, if we look for a way to pause, to remove ourselves, to tune into our breath, it's so powerful because we get into that reactive mode, right? That biological stress response, and we are fully engaged. And when we just even remove ourselves in, in terms of how am I breathing right now? Am I really breathing to my fullest extent? That brings us out of that stress response and we can start to bring our other you know, tools back into play. So breathing and tuning in, engaging the senses is one of the things that I, I share a lot, really bringing those back to front and using that pause to get curious. Curiosity and that spirit of play is something that I really love to bring value back to. As I'm working with clients, they think I don't have time for play. I've got to work now. I've got to get that success, reach those goals. I'll have time for play to restore my relationships later. And I love helping them see that we can actually turn that around and have a lot more fun en route to the goal. So those are a couple of the keynotes, sleep, um, that emotional irritability, seeing that show up, and then physical tension and physical issues as well. You know, cardiovascular disease is one that's always been closely related to stress, always is a big word, but for a long time. But now we're starting to recognize that even um, diseases like type two diabetes, where the conversation was only about what are you eating and are you moving your body? Stress is a really big factor in that starting to develop. So those other issues that the doctor might not be bringing the conversation to, how is your stress level? That's a place where I really like to, to take a look and engage and start to bring the benefit of these practices like mindfulness and breath work and that sort of thing.